Good Thursday morning to you. I'm Jim Shudo. I'm Poppy Harlow. No shortage of news from the White House this morning. You just heard the president attempting once again to get the final word on the Russia probe and a whole lot more this morning. He claimed Russia did not try to get him elected, thus contradicting his own statement from a few minutes earlier on Twitter. Then he blasted Robert Mueller, the special counsel, as a never Trumper who had an ax to grind. Make no mistake here, the president on the White House lawn there recited a series of claims, long debunked claims, not based in fact, easily contradicted and fact checked. Uh, he said that Robert Mueller was conflicted. This, after a couple of weeks ago, he said Mo Robert Mueller was an honorable man when his reading of the special counsel report was that it was in favor of him. He said that President Obama never confronted Russia on election interference, when in fact we know the president at the time directly confronted Vladimir Putin uh, in a way that this president is not. And you'll remember this president uh, stood next to Vladimir Putin and accepted his denial of interfering just, in the election. And just had that call with him and mm -hmm. didn't bring it up. And did not bring it up, repeatedly. Uh, oddly enough, he does confirm a story which the Navy had contested, and that is that U.S. Navy made an effort to block the name of the USS John McCain, uh, John S. McCain, which is named after both John McCain's father and yeah. grandfather, the first two father and son pair to, to hold the rank of four-star admiral. Uh, he said, the president, they thought they were doing me a favor. The president apparently confirming uh, that, that U.S. The Navy House officers on direction from the White House felt the need to block out the name of a U.S. naval warship because it might insult the president in some way. This is the world we live in today. Uh, we've got a panel of very smart yeah. people uh, around us here, but we've got Abby Phillip at the White House. She was there with the president. Uh, Abby. Uh, what stood out to you there from what was really a greatest hit list, uh, greatest hits list uh, of the president's claims? Yeah, Jim and Poppy, where do we even begin on this one? I think what really struck out at me was how angry the president was at Robert Mueller. I think he's come really full circle on this. In the days after the Mueller report was released, he acknowledged that Mueller acted honorably. Today, when he was asked, do you still believe that Robert Mueller acted honorably? The president not only did not say that, but he accused Mueller of being conflicted. He brought up this uh, case in which Mueller had some dispute with the president's golf club. Uh, he called Mueller a never-Trumper, and I think that in, in the, his comments today, the president has really uh, shown how uh, irritated he has been by what has transpired over the last 24 hours. Uh, he said that Mueller uh, was basically... Uh, you know, a part of the Never Trump movement, part of the movement of people trying to take him out of office. He questioned why he didn't investigate uh, people like James Comey and Peter Strzok and Lisa Page. And then he went on to talk about impeachment, which he called a dirty, filthy, disgusting word. Those were his words exactly. Dirty, filthy, disgusting word. He said he's not sure that the courts will even allow the Democrats to impeach him. Uh, he said this because he believes that Mueller uh, basically basically uh, exonerated him of all crimes. He said Mueller was not able to bring charges against him on collusion, conspiracy, and obstruction, and that is essentially an exoneration for him. So the president is doubling down. He is, you know, strongly going against Mueller in this situation, even as his White House is trying to say that the case is closed. Clearly, in the president's own mind, the case is not closed, and in a lot of ways, he's misrepresenting what Mueller is mm. saying and what the Mueller yeah. report found, particularly as it relates to what Russia was trying to do in the 2016 election. Yeah. Jim I mean, he, he's also making things up. I mean, he says that Mueller wanted the FBI job when, in fact, Steve Bannon testified that it was the White House who invited Mueller uh, in those days then to offer per perspective on the FBI. So the president lied there, making that claim as he attacked Robert Mueller. He did. You know what also is so interesting, Abby, is that the president just used those uh, words to describe impeachment, you just lay them out, disgusting, etc. But his own team says, go ahead and impeach the president. It's going to help us win the election in 2020. Ironic. Yeah, and I think that there is a kind of duality to this in which the president... Uh, he hates this idea that he might be impeached. In, in his view, Democrats are the ones who committed the crimes. But at the same time, 
his aides believe that this could be, if they if they have to face impeachment, it could be a potential political boon to him. And sources told us yesterday that the president himself, you know, when he's talking to his friends and his advisors, he says, bring it on, essentially. He says, if the Democrats want to impeach me, the American people will essentially understand this to be a scam. Uh, you know, we'll find out whether that is the case or not, whether impeachment even happens and whether he will win out. But I think he's experiencing both thoughts at the same time in which he thinks impeachment uh, is is wrong. Democrats can't do it to him. But at the same time, if they do, that he will win out at the end. Hey, Happy Philip. Thank you very, very much for all of that. The president may have been very honest this morning on Twitter. Let's pull up for you his tweet in the last half an hour or so. All right, so let me read this to you. It's a little far away from me. All right, here, look at the highlighted part. I had nothing to do with Russia helping me get elected. Okay? <laughs> Jim... Jim emailed the moment that came yeah. out, and I mean, was, he's saying that Russia helped me get yeah, elected. Okay, that was like 30 out. minutes ago. Here's the president like 20 minutes ago. Russia did not help me get elected. You know who got me elected? You know who got me elected? I got me elected. Russia didn't help me at all. Russia, if anything, I think helped the other side. Well, that's air, not air based on anything air, whatsoever. Air, air, no, and it's, it's not, not based on anything. It's just a complete lie. Mm -hmm. Well, which I mean, one? It's just a, Hold on, which well, one? Well, well, the the fact honest? that, that, that well, Russia it, 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 helped... We could, helped we, could, we could certainly point out... Uh, right, right, yes. Yeah, we're I'm aware sorry. Let, let, you, know, right, you, could, you could point out in passing it's extraordinarily ungracious not to um, credit his voters with making a president, right? He says, he did it. Okay, fine, he did it. Um, we, we have, let's see, we have out of the words of the mouth of, of, of uh, Putin that this was his favorite candidate. We have uh, all of the intelligence agencies. We have this exhaustive report. Yeah. And we have the president half an hour ago all mm -hmm. saying uh, Russia wanted yeah. Trump to yeah. be elected. We have the whole, the whole premise well, of the help, Trump Tower meeting. Me. I mean, yeah, that we, we have the whole premise of the Trump <clears throat> Tower meeting. Everyone knows this. Everyone knows this. So the question becomes, you know, following up on, on Jeffrey's point, why does somebody tell an obvious lie that everybody knows is, is just that? Well, well with, he's with building, I think he's building a political case. He's That's giving right. some mm -hmm. kind of talking points to his diehard supporters who are not really interested in facts. They know they're going to support mm -hmm. him. He's just giving them something that is sort of and plausible why, to say. And to that point, why does he think his supporters are such rubes? Why does he have such contempt for the intelligence and the analytical ability of his supporters? And the, the feedback loop you see in here between him and some of the opinion hosts on Fox News is extraordinary. It's actually unclear who's talk, parroting whose talking points at this mm -hmm. point. Yeah, well, and, and sometimes those point. talking points are mimicked by Russia's talking points. Right? Uh -huh. I mean, you, you saw the Kremlin in the wake of the Mueller statement repeating a lot of phrases that, that you hear from the White House about, you know, this being about Russophobia, you know, the case is closed, et cetera. Bianca Goladriga, you're with us as well. You know, it's interesting, John Avalon talked about this being an unhinged moment. I wonder if, uh, if it's hinged right, <laughs> in some way in that this is part of an ongoing strategy by, by this president, is it not, to undermine confidence, and he knows that he's not going to convince the 54% who's already decided they disapprove of his job, and that's a pretty solid number. He's just got to keep a 40% with a question about Mueller, et cetera, and as John said smartly, give them kind of an excuse to themselves to continue supporting it. Look, there was nothing that we saw or heard from Mueller yesterday that veered off of that initial report other than we heard from him, right? And look at how that got under the president's skin. Six weeks ago when the report came out, he called him an honorable man. Today he called him uh, some of the worst offensive uh, language that we've heard him in reference to Bob Mueller. We've heard him use in reference to Bob Mueller. So you clearly can see the impact of Bill Barr's initial four-page memo. I mean, imagine if we had just heard what we heard from Robert Mueller yesterday, three days after that report came out. Yeah. Instead of hearing mm -hmm. about the four-page yeah. report from in the summary from Bill Barr, imagine if we had just heard those eight minutes from Robert Mueller yesterday. The, the lines have been blurred. They've been muddied. I, I didn't hear Robert Mueller uh, accuse the media of misinterpreting the Mueller report as we'd heard from Bill Barr. You heard Robert Mueller uh, thank the investigators, thank the FBI officials, thank the prosecutors that had worked with integrity, obviously that mm -hmm. being a reference to the president 
uh, attacking uh, this uh, this prosecutorial team for two years now. And when it comes to Russia, you have the administration arguing, as they have been, and in many respects, they're right, that this administration has been tougher on Russia when it comes to sanctions, when it comes to ar uh, arming the Ukrainians. Wow. However, you see the power of the president still denying that Russia had an impact or influence on this election, where Vladimir Putin himself said that I favored uh, Donald Trump over Hillary Clinton, where Vladimir Putin himself said, well, maybe there were some Russian patriots that decided to, uh, you know, hack some computers. We have very sophisticated, you know, computer savvy people in my country. Donald Trump, by the president of the United States, not addressing this head on, not saying that this is the one issue we're going to ta uh, tackle in our election system, our democratic process will not be attacked by any country, regardless of who they support. That speaks volumes. That speaks volumes to Vladimir Putin, and that gives him the, the plausible deniability that he has used to this day.